Hello, 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 everybody, and I hope that you can hear me, and if you can, that's brilliant! I'm just checking the framing to make sure everything's okay. I want to say welcome to the stream for this afternoon uh, from a fairly muggy, I would say, studio. It's cold, it's been cooling down now in London, which is quite nice. But uh, anyway, so here we go. Uh, we are doing Lone Wolf. Now, if you are new to the stream, what is Lone Wolf? Lone Wolf was a series of books that started coming out from 1985 or around about there. And um, the big thing about Lone Wolf is it's choose your own adventure. So as you're reading through the book, you don't read it from beginning to end. Each series of chapters or each entry is a number and you uh, get to make decisions and turn from one chapter to another. You bounce all over the book as you're reading it through and you try and survive. Now there's also combat mechanics, um, which uh, I'll discuss now. That's all of this stuff up here. You can see we've got a combat skill, we've got endurance points. Those are pretty self-explanatory as to what they are. And then of course we've got some meals, we've got some gold and we've got our backpack. And uh, so that's where we are currently at the moment, and we are going to be continuing our journey. But, but before that, the uh, publishers, the owners of um, Lone Wolf, that's Home Guard Press and Home Guard, Home Guard Games. Um, Home Guard Press is run by uh, Joe Dever's son, as a matter of fact. Uh, the original author, Joe Dever, passed away in 1996, sadly. But uh, his son has continued along the legacy, as has Project Aeon, uh, who have kept the Lone Wolf series going, and now it's back in full force with a brand new release of the books. Now, they sent me the first seven books, and those are behind me here. Oh, you can't see my thumb. Uh, these are them there. Uh, all of those books there, uh, they've sent me a brand new copy of the books. Now, the books are a beautiful hard copy book to begin with. Absolutely stunning hard copy book. And much, much thicker <clears throat> than the original version. And uh, when I asked why, well, because the books have been updated based on notes and interviews uh, with Joe um, over the last, uh, well, since he started writing, basically, and now includes a whole bunch of stuff that the original books that I bought a long time ago uh, just don't include. They also sent me an extra copy of book number one, Flight from the Dark, the very first book in the series. And they said, why don't you give it away to some fans? And I said, well, that is a brilliant, brilliant idea. So I'm going to be giving away this book today to one of you. And uh, I'll pop it in the mail and hopefully it will get to you. Now, some caveats. If you live in a country that is outside of the US, Canada or Europe, it will be cheaper for me to buy you an Amazon version of this book in the country that you live in. So if you're from Australia, or if you're from South America, or if you're from South Africa, or one of those outlying regions, you know who you are. You won't get this actual book. You'll get a book in the post, I guess. Uh, because that's just how postage works. It's literally cheaper to buy it local, uh, in many cases. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. So this book is going to be given out to you at some point during today's stream. And I think it should be either when we finish the book, or when our character dies. We had a character death last week. Now, if you haven't watched last week's stream, don't worry. You don't have to sit through an hour-long stream to figure out what's going on. I will give you a very brief recap. And um, so that is coming up. Uh, when we are running through the book, every time we come to a choice, for example, uh, the last choice that we had, uh, which was 264 was you can, is that right, 264, no that didn't look right, there we go, so um, it says you can follow the sound or you can continue south, follow the sound, 97, continue south, 6, I will ask you for a number, it's either 97 or 6, I will read out the two numbers, you've got to type into chat the number that you want to pursue, <coughs> excuse me, my hay fever is killing me, so my throat dries out quite quickly, so you would write down either 97 or 6, depending on which choice you want to go with. Um, so that is something to bear in mind. Right, so where are we in Flight from the Dark? What has happened? 
Well, Lone Wolf, the character that uh, we have adopted, that we have taken on, and uh, you have as a little um, sketch there, or who is uh, on the um, thumbnail of the, the video. Give me a second here. Is the last surviving member of the Kai Order. Now, the Kai are fantasy Jedi, basically. They, they're they these monks who train and who have discipline and who have certain abilities, certain special powers. And those you can see down here, where we've got our Kai discipline of camouflage, sixth sense, animal kinship, mind shield, and tracking. And so we have got that uh, to, to help us through the book. There are a whole lot of other disciplines which we didn't select, but those are the ones that we have currently got, and those are the ones that are seeing us uh, continue. So the monastery was attacked where we were studying and everybody in the monastery, including all of the Kai great lords, were slain by the evil hordes of the Dark Lords. The Dark Lords are trying to invade our home, our wonderful home of Sumerland, which you can see here on the map. And uh, it looks as if they've come over the uh, mountains, the Donkarg Mountains uh, in the west there. And they've come to the Kai Monastery. We also know that the city of Turan in the north has also been hit quite badly. We saw smoke as we were fleeing from the Kai Monastery. But we are trying, desperately, desperately trying to make our way to Holmgard. That's the capital uh, in the uh, southwest. And uh, we've fled the Kai Monastery. We've been running around for quite some time now, heading south pretty much most of the time. We have come across a road, which may be the, the main highway between Toran and Home God. We haven't yet come across the river Anorum, uh, which, as you can see, flows between the Kai Monastery and Home God. We haven't got there yet, as far as I know. And uh, so we are running for our lives. We are running for our lives. Now, that's it, I think. Um, let's see. Let's see what happens uh, as we continue our reading. Now, please bear in mind, this is me reading live, so there are occasions for mistakes. Um, this is 264. Now, I'm going to give you a little heads up. There's an interesting project, a Lone Wolf project, called The Fortress of Death. The Fortress of Death. I'll share these details uh, as we get closer and closer to it. It is a Kickstarter that is coming in August. It's an audio version of a new uh, fan-written, and but Lone Wolf uh, approved and authorized story uh, called The Fortress of Death. And, um, well, let's just see what comes of that. But there could be some quite interesting things, and that is from soundrealms.com. Uh, so, anyway, that's an aside. Let's get on with it. You have not gone far when you hear the sound of a battle to the west. If you wish to follow the sound, turn to 97. If you would rather continue south, turn to 6. Now, our combat skill is 10 out of a potential 19. That is the highest that it could have been. Uh, well, it could actually have been 21, technically, uh, to give you a sense of how our combat skill uh, rating is. So we've got some folks already. Uh, we're not streaming to Twitch anymore. Twitch has now updated their policies. You are not allowed to restream to Twitch uh, and to YouTube at the same time. They don't like it. So au revoir, Twitch, if you were wondering why there is nothing happening on Twitch. Uh, right, so it's not a very accurate count at all, folks. I sort of go look at that and I go, I see lots more sixes than 97s. So we are just going to go south. We don't need to go into battle. What's this battle nonsense? Battles for other people. So off we go to six. Don't feel worried uh, or, or unhappy if your number doesn't come up. It will come up later on. I'm sure it will. Lots of sixes. Um, oh, yes. A very good uh, thing that Dolphan316 pointed out. Our entire mission is to get to Holmgard to warn the king. Uh, as if everyone on the road uh, that we saw, the refugees, the burning cities, wasn't a warning enough. Um, so uh, there we go. In the distance, you hear the sound of horses galloping nearer. You crouch behind a tree and wait as the riders come closer. They are the cavalry of the King's Guard, wearing the white uniforms of His Majesty's armour. Army. His Majesty's army. Uh, if you wish to call to them, 183. If you wish to let them pass and then continue your way through the forest, turn to 200. Do we wish to call out to them, 183? Or do we want to let them pass through on 200? 
Now, I'm not convinced that the Dark Lords have the ability to create illusions or to mask themselves, but, well, I'm not sure. Maybe we should just let them go about their business. What are they going to do? They can't help us, really. I mean, they're obviously on a mission going somewhere. So are we. We're going to the Home Guard, which is in the opposite direction, the direction they're riding. So let's see. We've got lots of 183s. More 183s, I think, than 200s. So we're going to call out to them. 183. <laughs> the officer orders his men to halt and asks you your business. You tell him who you are and how the monastery has been destroyed. He is deeply saddened to hear your news. He offers you a horse and asks you to accompany him to Prince Pelathar, the king's son. Well, do we accept 97 or do we decline his offer and go on to 200? So no, if you wanted to go to 200 before, now's your chance. But we have just been offered a chance to meet with Prince Pelathar uh, by an officer of His Majesty's army. Are we going 97 to say yes? <clears throat> Depends on where Pelathar is, I suppose. But we are being given a horse for it. No, let's have a look. 97 is definitely dead. Oh, lots of uh, some 200s creeping in there. Can't we just take the horse and go south? <laughs> uh, no, 97 it is. 97. We accept. We accept. As a member. Oh, oh hang on. Some 200s coming in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, it's close, it's close, it's close, it's close, it's close. But we're going to go to 97. We're Kai. We can't abandon our morals and our training. We're here to help people, even if we need to get the message out. But if, if the prince falls, uh, I, well, I suppose we still have the king, but that would be very sad, wouldn't it? We can't lose more people today. Oh, there's an illustration. <clears throat> I will show you this illustration in a moment. Ahead of you, you can see a fierce battle raging across a stone bridge. The clash of steel and the cries of men and beasts echo through the forest. In the midst of the fighting, you see Prince Pelathar, the king's son. He is in combat with a large grey Gurgaz, who is wielding a black axe above his scaly head. Suddenly, the prince falls wounded, a black arrow in his side. And here is the illustration. There is a Gurgaz focus. And the poor prince is about to get taken out. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. All right, so if you wish to defend the fallen prince, turn 255. If you wish to run into the forest, 306. Oh, well, can't help him. He's obviously dead. Too bad, so sad. Uh, long live your sister, maybe? I don't know. 255, do we defend the prince or do we go in and just avoid combat and just run into the forest? Looking pretty unanimous on 255. We've got a few folks. Uh, some people are saying 255 is suicide with a combat skill of 10. We're not the great look. I mean, we know when we were in training, we didn't really use the weapons so much. We preferred to spend time following the animals and, and, and spending time in nature. Ooh, lots of 306s now suddenly coming through. Let's see, a uh, quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 306s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, uh, two, five, fives. We're going in, we're going in for Sumerland, for the Kai. I'll save you, Prince Pelathor. Remember me when you're giving out land titles and things like that. 255. The creature you now face is a Gurgaz, one of the race of cold-blooded reptilian creatures that dwell deep in the treacherous Markenmeyer swamps. Their favorite food is human flesh. The prince's sword lies at your feet. You may pick up and use this weapon if you wish. The Gorgaz is about to strike you. You must fight him to the death. The creature is immune to mind blast. Oh, okay. I don't think this is going to be a very long combat, folks. 
20. We may just never actually get out of this book. Uh, because we're in a minus 10 ratio. <sighs> oh, I see Dolphan is already shaking his head. You also don't want to know how many endurance points this thing has got. Um, so, this is the thing about the book. We could use the quarterstaff, we could use an axe, we could use a sword. It makes no difference. The combat value is still the same. So here we go, folks. This is how combat works. We are using this uh, wonderful generator here that I got off of the internet. And so, with a combat ratio of minus 10, here is our first attack. The Gurga swings its black axe at us. We raise our little axe, and the enemy loses three endurance. We lose six endurance. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, that, uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, and the enemy loses three endurance, putting it on 27. I'm just going to... Uh, so I'll keep track of the endurance of the creature. Um, oh, no. Right. Um, here we go. So, once more. We have to fight him to the death. So he swings again. Uh-oh. We've lost eight endurance, and the enemy's lost nothing. So long, farewell, dear friends, tis the end, I say. But we're not dead yet. Another six? Okay, all right, good, good, good. They're on seven. Uh, we're on seven. Um, they're down to 23, uh, 24. Uh, you know, statistically, there's no chance. The enemy loses nothing, we lose seven. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, we, um, we, uh, we're in trouble here. The Gurgaz's black axe slices deeply into your chest, and the world slowly starts to go cold and dark. This is the end of the Kai, and the beginning of the reign of the Dark Lords. Well... Technically, it's a new record as to how quickly we died. It was 30 minutes the first time round. <clears throat> Brave, but not wise. Okay, folks. <laughs> now, we get to start again. Um, because we really have to finish this book in order to get into the next book. But I suppose that gives us some opportunities um, in order to, to move forward. Uh, we can reassess whether we are happy with the numbers and the values that we have for our character sheet. Uh, so I'm going to just reset these quickly and um, tell you now that the way that it works is uh, do we want to change our disciplines? Do we want to change our disciplines? This is the question I put to you. Now, the disciplines, if you remember, there is camouflage, which allows us to hide a bit better, but we can only hide when the book prompts us to hide. So just bear that in mind. We can't hide whenever we want to. Um, so there's camouflage, there's hunting, which uh, means we don't have to... Um, uh, eat food when we are instructed to eat food, unless we're in a desert or a wasteland. Uh, we have Sixth Sense, which kind of warns you. Sixth Sense is quite quite useful. Uh, we have Tracking, which obviously allows you to track. Uh, healing restores one endurance point for every chapter we move through that we're not wounded. We're not engaged in combat. So that could be work. That could work. That could work. Um, so... We could do that. We've got weapon skill, which would give us plus two to our combat skill uh, for a specific weapon type, though. It's not, not for all weapons. It's a specific weapon type. Mind shield, we've already got, which protects you from, from uh, Dark Lord attacks. Uh, mind blast, which does give you plus two if the enemy is... Uh, if the enemy is uh, not immune. Animal kinship, which allows us to communicate with animals. Mind over matter allows us to move things with our minds, sort of small amounts of levitation. So let's see. Um, if you have read through the book before, by the way, if you have read through these books, uh, try and obscure your suggestions uh, so that um, we don't, we're not trying to beat the book. We're just trying to play the book. Bear that in mind. 
All right, so we've got some votes here that um, healing might be good. Swap Mind Shield with healing. Get rid of Animal Kinship for healing. Uh, I think our dis disciplines are pretty solid. No Kinship. Let's go with healing. Um, yeah, Weapon Skill. I must admit, I find Weapon Skill quite limited because if you lose your weapon, suddenly your Weapon Skill discipline is useless. Mind Blast is better from that perspective. Uh, as I think there's less things that are immune to Mind Blast. Um, so there is that. Uh, is there any reason why you're not using the poll feature, says Germano Thomas. Yeah, well, there was a legacy reason for that. Um, but at the moment, I don't know how to use the poll feature in uh, YouTube. I shall look into it. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there. I read the books almost 40 years ago now. I remember nothing. Yeah, I remember nothing either. Uh, right. So uh, there you are. Okay, so let's get rid of animal kinship is what I'm seeing. And let's replace that with healing. Because that may help us. But I'm then going to ask you folks who are watching to please keep track of any recovered... Uh, endurance points that we have as we flip through the pages because I can't remember to keep track of that whilst turning to the page number etc etc so just do me a favor and and be a backup there for me um, all right so now we've got healing loaded up in there we're now going to uh, roll <clears throat> uh, for an outcome it's a good question there that um, Dragon asks, in these books, can your character be a girl? Well, there's no technical reason why you couldn't do it yourself. But the book series, and this is what made it so revolutionary at the time and why it, it, it won awards, is because you were playing the character of Lone Wolf, who is a male protagonist, through 20 books. There are 20 books that span the series. Um, so you could certainly change it. Uh, change the, 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 the gender of the character, absolutely. But it isn't as in the book. Let's put it that way. Right, so combat skill is next. And for the combat skill, we roll. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to leave these numbers here. So we're just looking at the rolled number. Combat results, you rolled A, because it's a random number. So this is a combat skill. You rolled a 7. So that puts our combat skill at 17 which is significantly better than uh, it has been in the past. And for our endurance points, we start with a base of 20 and we roll again. So we have 22 endurance points. So we're a little bit more squishy, but we can fight a little bit better. So that's where we find ourselves right now. And um, I've got a doorbell going off uh, somewhere. Yes, thank you, Alexa. Shut up. I'm trying to do a live stream, can't you see? Uh, you know, modern day technology is just crazy. Okay, so here we go. We have now got our um, character all ready to go. We're going to jump straight back into it. Uh, for those of you that know, if we have the discipline, I will automatically just use that discipline. And uh, let's see, uh, John Smith saying, now we can fight off an angry squirrel. Uh, yes, provided that squirrel is not um, in any way armed, because I think then we are there are uh, problems. So here we are. Okay, <clears throat> now here we go once more with feeling. You must make haste for you. S <clears throat> one more with feeling. You must make haste for you sense it is not safe to linger by the smoking remains of the ruined monastery. Premonitions of other young acolytes desperately trying to make their way through the forest and being hacked, mauled, and eaten to death flood your mind as you desperately run down a path trying to get to the capital of Home God. I am improvising. Fighting back tears, <laughs> you bid farewell to your dead kinsmen. Silently, you promise that their deaths will be avenged. You turn away from the ruins and carefully descend the steep track. At the foot of the hill, the path splits in two directions, both leading into a large wood. 141. Your sixth sense has warned you that some of the creatures that attacked the monastery are searching the two paths for any survivors of their raid. But you can avoid both tracks by making your way through the undergrowth of the woods. Now, if you wish to head south, turn to 56. If you wish to cut through the heavier foliage towards the northeast, turn to 33. 
All right, so I'll bring up that map for you. So if we go south, we go to 56. If we go northeast, we go to 33. So northeast would seem to be in a different direction to where we want to go, but 33 is kind of maybe a safer route. 33 definitely coming up uh, winning uh, there. 56, 33 still in the lead. And I'm going to call it 33 it is. We'll do polls next time once I figure out how to get that technology working. Um, okay, we are going to head northeast. Someone keep track on a map where the hell we are. 33, uh, 333. Right, northeast. We haven't done this direction before. Maybe it'll work out better for us. 333. And this is... Folks, one of the things that I absolutely loved about these books is that you die and you try again and you try again and it's always different, always different. Okay, uh, right. So, you have cut your way through the thick undergrowth for nearly half an hour when you hear the beat of wings high above the trees. Looking up, you can just make out the shape of a kran approaching from the north. It is one of the monsters that attack the monastery, and on its back are two grey-skinned creatures armed with long spears. These are mountain Giaks, evil servants of the Dark Lords, full of hatred and malice. Many centuries ago, their ancestors were used by the Dark Lords to build the infernal city of Helgadad, which lies in the volcanic wastelands beyond the Durnkarg range of mountains. The construction of the city was long and tortuous, and only the strongest of the Giaks survived the heat and poisonous atmosphere of Helgadad. Hidden by the trees, you freeze, keeping absolutely still, as the Kran passes overhead and disappears towards the south. When you are sure that it is gone, you move off once again into the forest. 131. Oh, we have an illustration. You have covered about a quarter of a mile when you hear shouting and a noise like thunderclaps ahead. Edging nearer, you soon make out a clearing that you recognize to be the site of the ruins of Raumus, an ancient forest temple. A war party of Giaks, some 25 to 30 strong, are attacking the, are attacking the ruins from all sides. Many more of the Giaks are dead or dying among the broken pillars of marble, but still they assault whatever is hidden inside. Suddenly, a bolt of blue lightning rips through the front ranks of Giaks, sending the armor-clad creatures tumbling in all directions. A Giak, taller than the others and dressed from head to foot in black chainmail, curses at his troops as he whips them forward with a barbed flail. With weapon ready, you move to the edge of the clearing, under cover of the thick foliage, and try to catch a glimpse of the defenders. To your amazement, the ruins are being defended by a young man no older than yourself. You recognize his sky-blue robes, embroidered with stars. He is a young magician of the Magician's Guild of Turan, an apprentice in magic. Five Giaks charged forward, their spears raised to stab the apprentice as he hurriedly retreats deeper into the ruins. You see him turn and raise his left hand just before a bolt of blue flame shoots from his fingertips into the snarling Giak soldiers. Close to where you are hidden, you see a Giak scuttle past and climb one of the pillars of the temple. He has a long curved dagger in his mouth and he is about to jump onto the young wizard standing below. If you wish to shout a warning, oi, turn to 241. 241, all right? If you wish to run forward and attack the Giak when he jumps, turn to 55. If you wish to pick up a chunk of temple marble and throw it at the Giak's head, 302. Or if you would rather leave the battle area and run back into the woods, 101. So we've got lots of options there. 241, shout a warning to the wizard. 55, attack the Giak when he jumps midair. 302, throw a chunk of marble at the Giak's head. Or 101, we run away. 
we run away. All right, good. We've got no 101s coming through. We're not running away this time. Damn it, we're three pages in. Not running away. But how we're going to engage this Giac is up for debate. 55 and 302 seem to be the number of choice. 302 definitely seems to be the one that we're going to go with. 302 it is. All right, 302. We're going to pick up a chunk of marble and throw it. 302. I mean, we do have... Um, Oh, we don't have Mind Over Matter, so we can't do that. 302, 302. Oh, pick a random number. Pick a random number. Okay, random number, number. And that's a three. 285. With a sickening thud, the chunk of marble cracks open the back of the Giax head. The creature drops to its knees and slowly falls forward, down to the ruins below. Elated by your skill, you race forward to aid the young wizard. <laughs> a success! Is this a portent, my fellow uh, adventurers? Are we finally, finally going to make it? We win! <laughs> Yay! Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, yes, uh, let's, uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Three, three, th uh, three, two, three, two, five, three, two, five. Uh, someone's actually pointed out something very important. I forgot to give us one piece of uh, equipment that, uh, we found in the ruins of the monastery. So we're just going to go and roll that quickly. Um, three, two, five, three, two, five. So we're going to roll the equipment that we should have picked up at the monastery. That's a five. Oh, boring. We have a mace. So no real difference there. Would it be nice if we got some chain mail or something like that? But uh, well, so, 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 so before, there it is. Right. So, 325. Upon seeing you emerge from the woods, the Giac, the Giac officer shouts, Argot! Argot! to his cowering troops, who flee the ruins and run to the safety of the forest. Shaking his mailed fist at you, the black-clad Giac screams, before leaving. Surveying the scene of battle, you count over 15 Giac dead laying among the broken pillars of Raumus. The young wizard wipes his brow and walks towards you, his hand extended in friendship. I kid you not, that's what was written there. It was it, it, Renegragach, I assume. Three, four, nine. Three, four, nine. <clears throat> Things certainly are turning in the right direction. That's what I say. <laughs> I will get you, my pretty. All right, three, four, nine. He is a young, blonde-haired youth with deep, brooding eyes. His face is lined with exhaustion and the grime of battle, and his long sky-blue robes bear evidence of living rough in the wilds. He shakes your hand and bows. My eternal thanks, Kylord. My powers were nearly drained. Had you not come to my aid, I fear I would have ended my days atop a Giac lance. He is weak and unsteadily on his feet. You take his arm and sit him down upon a fallen pillar, where you listen intently to what he has to say. Uh, my name is Bainden. I am a journeyman to the Brotherhood of the Crystal Star, uh, which is the Magician's Guild of Turan. My guildmaster has sent me to your monastery with urgent message. He removes a vellum envelope from inside his robes and hands it to you. Uh, as you see, I have opened the letter and read its contents. When the war started, I was on the highway with two travelling companions. The Kran attacked us, and we lost each other in the forest during our escape. The letter is a warning to the Kai Lords that the Dark Lords have mustered a vast army beyond the Durnkar Grange. The Guildmaster urges the Kai to cancel the celebrations of Faman and prepare for war. I fear we were betrayed, says Bainden his head bowed in sorrow. One of my order, a, a brother called Vonatar, had explored the forbidden mysteries of the black art. Ten days ago he denounced the Brotherhood and killed one of our elders. He has since disappeared. It is rumoured that he now aids the Dark Lords. 
You tell Bainden what has happened at the monastery and of your mission to warn the king. Silently, he removes a gold chain from around his neck and hands it to you. <clears throat> On the chain is a small crystal star pendant. It is the symbol of my brotherhood, and we are both truly brothers in this hour of darkness. It is a talisman of good fortune. May it protect you on the road ahead. You thank him, you place the cha you thank him and place the chain around your neck and slip the crystal star inside your shirt. Remember to mark it on your action chart. <coughs> crystal star. All right. Crystal star. There we go. Well, well. I mean, <clears throat> do you think we could journey together, perhaps? Or, or go together? No. No. I have to go in my own direction, apparently. It's not in the script, but Bainden bids you farewell. We must leave this place, lest the Giacs return with more of their loathsome kind to put an end to us. I must return to my guild. I bid you farewell, my brother. May the luck of the gods go with you. 293. That was a long entry, 293. <clears throat> with a wave of his hand, Bainden leaves the ruins, and you continue your mission, pushing on through the thick woods ahead. You have not gone far when you realize several pairs of yellow eyes are watching you from the undergrowth to your left. Suddenly, a black arrow skims the top of your head. It is a Giac ambush, and you must run as fast as you can to escape it. No! No! As you race through the trees, you can hear the horrible cackle of the Giacs close behind you. Soon the trees start to thin out, and directly ahead you can see a rocky hillside. Do you break cover and climb up the hill, 311, or do you change direction and continue your run through the forest? 77. Do we keep running or do we climb a hill? 311 or 77? Daryl Walker talking about your book editions. If you are using this book, the latest reprint, it's going to be very different. And I believe there were slightly different, different sets uh, released in the US versus in the UK or uh, anywhere else in the world for that matter. So, <clears throat> 77, 77, 77, 77 it is. Change direction. All right. The mountain Giacs are unaccustomed to pursuing their prey through forests, and you soon outdistance them until finally the sounds of their grunts and curses disappears completely. When you are satisfied that they have given up the chase, you stop for a few minutes to catch your breath. <sighs> and check your equipment. With the memory of your ruined monastery still blazing in your mind, you gather up your meager belongings and push on. To 19. Just ahead through the tall trees, you can see clumps of dark red gallow brush, a thorny briar with sharp crimson barbs. The common name for this forest weed is sleep tooth, for the thorns are very sharp and can make you feel weak and sleepy if they scratch your skin. Do we avoid the sleep tooth? Oh, we have the Kai discipline of tracking, I believe. Yes, we do. So we're going to 69. <laughs> okay. You are very near a friendly village. Avoid the Gallabrush and turn to 272. All right, so be it, 272. This reminds me of our first character, I think. Another delivery, fantastic, this is great, lovely. So nice to have all of these people. Be silent, be silent. Yes, I know, Alexa, go away. Thank you, right. Keeping a watchful eye on the sky above, you move quickly through the, along the track. You recall that this route leads to Fogwood, a small cluster of huts that have been used by a family of charcoal burners for nearly 50 years. After 20 minutes, you reach the edge of a clearing where the huts are grouped in a small circle. There is no sign of the usual mist of wood smoke which gives Fogwood its apt name, 
and the huts are unusually quiet. We have the Kai discipline of tracking. So, 134. It's quite different from the last time we were here. here. Using your skills, you detect Giak tracks around the perimeter of the clearing. The prints are fresh, and you can tell that these cruel minions of the Dark Lords were in this area less than two hours ago. Forewarned by this knowledge, if you decide to investigate the huts, turn to 305, or if you would rather avoid the clearing, turn to 40. What shall we do? Do we investigate the huts with the knowledge that the Gex were here less than two hours ago, or do we just avoid it altogether? 305 to investigate the huts, 40 to avoid the clearing. Yeah, the camera focus. Uh, so someone said I type in poll. Is that right? That doesn't work. Uh, right. So uh, let's see. Where are we? Um, yes, 305 or 40. 305, 40 seems to come up a lot of the time. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need a tiebreaker. I need a tiebreaker, folks. Someone give me a tiebreaker. Uh, three or five, it is. Right, three or five, it is. Off we go to three or five. Right, <clears throat> we're exploring the huts. Through the open doorway of the first hut, you can see the body of a charcoal burner lying face down on the rough stone floor. He has been murdered, stabbed in the back by a spear. All his furniture and belongings have been smashed and broken, and not one piece remains intact. This is the evil handiwork of Giax, without any doubt, for they delight in the destruction of all things. A quick check of the other huts reveals a similar story of murder and wreckage. In the last hut that you search, you discover a Giax spear, proof of your suspicions. You may keep this weapon if you wish. More determined than ever now to succeed in your mission. You continue along the track. 105. Do we want to keep the spear, drop the mace, or the axe? We can only have two weapons. So, uh, we don't want to keep the spear? No, there's no difference. The spear or the axe, the mace, there's no mechanical difference. Yeah, keep the spear. I think so. Let's drop the mace. Maces are, are just blunt axes, really. Uh, so let's call that a spear. Okay, good. And we're going on to uh, 105. There are no stats for the spear. It's just, just a spear. 105. Here we go. And touch wood. We're going to make more progress. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I remember this one. Ha, ha, ha. In the distance, perched on the branch of an old oak tree, is a jet black raven. Whatever the sound a raven makes. Okay, you make a sound of a raven. Let's see you do a better one. Right. We do not have the uh, Kai discipline of animal kinship anymore because we just didn't take it. We got rid of that and we got healing instead. So, 335. 335. As you approach, the blackbird flies off above the trees and soon disappears from view. You search the tree on which it was perched, but find nothing unusual. Rather than waste any more precious time, you continue off along the track. One, two, one. After a few minutes walking, you see a stranger, clad in red, standing in the center of the track ahead. He has his back towards you, and his head is covered by the hood of his robes. Perched on his outstretched arm is the black raven you saw earlier. So, do we avoid? <laughs> it's a trap, it's a trap, says everyone. He's wearing red, folks. He's going to run fast, but he's also dangerous. So, do we wish to call out to the stranger? 342. Do we wish to approach the stranger cautiously? 309. Or would we rather draw our weapon and attack? 283. So we don't have a choice of running away this time. Do we want to call out to the stranger? 342. Do we want to approach cautiously? 309. Or would we just draw our weapon and attack? 283. 
<clears throat> one for two eight three, two three for two. Oh, two eight three is being chosen quite often. Uh, attack. We can't go back. Uh, oh, it's a it's a tight one. It's a tight one. Three oh nine. Let's see. Two eight three. Two eight three. Two eight three. Two eight one. Oh my goodness. Two eight three. All right, we're doing it. We're drawing our weapon. Two eight three. Heaven help us. Two eight three. Two eight five. Two eight. Th okay. You are only ten feet away or so from the robed stranger when the raven squawks a warning to its master, who instantly spins around. You are frozen in your tracks by the hideous apparition of a Vordak, a lieutenant of the Dark Lords and one of the undead. You must fight him. Due to the surprise of your attack, you may add two points to your combat skill for the first round of combat only. Unless you have the Kai Discipline of Mind Shield, yes, we do deduct two from your combat skill for the second and subsequent rounds of fighting, for the creature is attacking you with the power of its mind force, as well as a large black mace. Okay, so here we go. Much better this time. So we're on 19 for our combat skill, and the enemy is on 17, giving us a positive ratio for once. That's only for this round, though. Next round, it's a pretty fair game. Uh, we don't have anything else that adds to that. No? Okay. All right. Right. First round of combat. You will die. Enemy loses seven endurance points. Great. It has 25. So that puts it on 18. We lose three. That puts us on 19. Okay. Next round. Clang, bash. Are we using the axe or are we using the spear to block and thrust? I think we're using the spear. Let's go with the spear. All right, next round. No! The enemy loses four, putting them on a grand total of 14. We lose five, which puts us on 14. No, come on. Next attack. I will not go gently. Oh, we rolled a two. The enemy loses five. Putting them on 9, we lose 4, putting us on 10. Oh, I don't want to look. Oh, we're supposed to change the combat skill as well. Oh, all right, well, um, we'll call that, um, um, you know, just general problems uh, with, with, with maintenance. Here we go. Um, right, and boom, you rolled a 0. Yes, the enemy loses 12, the hero loses 0. I am happy with that. That puts the Vordak dead and us winning us winning and yes we yeah well you know the combat rating we um with that advantage that ambush the vordak was terrified of a gx spear being used against it so that's why we had the advantage for two rounds longer than we possibly should have uh but that's i'm taking it as a win i'm taking it as a win and since it's my stream uh that's what i can do good so 10 hit points start keeping track of every chapter that i pass through that we don't take damage and uh, uh, we get a healing, we get one endurance points back. We get one endurance points back. Right. As the creature dies, its body slowly dissolves into a vile green liquid. You notice that all of the grass and the plants beneath the smoking fluid are beginning to shrivel and die. A large, valuable looking gem lies on the ground near to the decaying body. Further along the track, you can see a large war party of Giax running towards you. Do we wish to take the gem, 304, or should we just leave it and run on two? <sighs> Who knows what happened to the raven? Apparently it's gone. It's just left. Do we take the gem or do we run? 304, we take the gem. Two, we run. Yeah, the gem is suspicious. Could it be like a communication stone? Something that allows it to communicate? 304, apparently we're picking up this gem. We're going with the gem because, you know, the stream is nearly over and death is, has not yet happened yet. So 304. Oh. The gem feels incredibly hot and burns ah! your hands. You lose two endurance points. Okay, fine. 
You quickly pick it up with the edge of your Kai cloak and slip it into your backpack. A gem that size must be worth hundreds of crowns. But the Giax are very close and their arrows whistle past your head as you turn and run for the safety of the forest. We have a gem. Green gem. Okay. Looking good. We're alive. I guess. Good. Turn to two. As you dash through the thickening trees, the shouts of the Giax behind you begin to fade. You have nearly outdistanced them completely when you crash headlong into a tangle of low branches. Roll a number. Uh, roll a number. Four. Three, four, three. Here we go. Death by fern. Three, four, three. <laughs> you are held by the mass of tangled branches and roots. Eventually, you free your right hand, grab your axe, and hack your way slowly through the foliage to the clearer forest beyond. Your cloak is torn in several places, and your left arm is cut and badly bruised above the elbow. Lose two endurance points. Two, and turn to two, one, three. We need some entries that don't involve death or combat. Oh, we've healed two. We've healed two. Okay, all right. I'll take that. We'll go back to eight. I mean, this forest is killing us, folks. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. <clears throat> you have been trudging through the forest for nearly two hours. The nagging fear that you are lost begins to seem a reality. Apart from the occasional cry of a crown in the far distance, you have seen or heard no evidence that the enemy is in this part of the forest. As you descend a rocky hillock, you see something unusual in the tangled woods ahead. 331. Surrounded by thorny briars and closely packed roots, you see the entrance of a tunnel disappearing into the hillside beyond. It is approximately seven feet in height and just over ten feet wide. As you get closer, you can feel a slight breeze coming from the inky blackness. If the other end of this tunnel emerges on the far side of the hill, it could save you many hours of difficult climbing. But it could also harbour unknown danger. Do we uh, prefer to take the tunnel, 170? Or should we climb the hillside, 280? Maybe expose ourselves to the uh, Giax and the Kran flying around. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 170, we go through the tunnel. 280, we try and climb over the top. Let me know what you want us to do. And I'm going to try and do this poll thing while you are coming up with those numbers. I've got to type in the right place, haven't I? Nope, doing it that way didn't work. I will, I will read up on how to do it. I will read up on how to do it. I will be less, I promise folks. Okay, 170 definitely is the winner. Um, so, uh, there we go. Uh, this counts as a new heal. So we are on 10 now, I think. So there we go, which is good. <clears throat> and so we're going through the tunnel. 170. I'm just going to show you the image. I'm holding this up. This is this is the this is the overleaf. There might have been a, a, a delay. There, I've just been warned that there was a buffering issue. But it should be sorted out now. Is everybody back? Y'all back? I hope y'all back. Yep, it did. But it's still running. Hopefully, it's still running. I continue to show you this image. 
while we wait for everything to come back. I'm good now. Yep. All right. All good. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The tunnel is dark and the air is much cooler than outside. You carefully advance with one hand on the tunnel wall to aid your sense of direction. You have been in total darkness for three minutes when you detect the foul smell of decay ahead, similar to rotting meat. <coughs> if you have a torch and tinderbox in your backpack, you may light the torch to see your way ahead. Suddenly, something heavy drops from the tunnel ceiling onto your back, and you fall to your knees. It is a burrow crawler, and you must fight it, for it is trying to strangle you with its long, slimy tentacles. Oh, my God. If you do not have a torch, deduct three points from your combat skill during this fight. The burrow crawler is immune to mind blast and animal kinship. And now... At the end, the final curtain. So long, farewell. It only has seven endurance points. It only has seven endurance points. Uh, however, we only have ten, and we're on a minus three ratio. We healed up every time we needed to heal up, right? I mean, so, yeah. Uh, here we go. Yes, 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 that's what we want. We want that. We want that. That's what we want more of. The creature is... <laughs> Stabbed, killed, dead. We take one endurance point's worth of damage, and it is dead. That is what we wanted. That is what we wanted. <laughs> There's a chance. 319. Three, one, nine. The slimy creature lets out a long, ghastly death cry and collapses. Yeah, yeah, suck it. You are near to panic and scramble to your feet, grabbing what you think to be your belt from the jaws of the dead beast. You can see light in the far distance, and you sprint for it as fast as you can. When you finally emerge into the daylight... You fall onto the leafy ground and fight for breath in painful gasps. <sighs> Slowly sitting upright, you notice that you are still wearing your belt. You had not lost it after all. What you grab from the jaw of the bone crawler, burrow crawler, was a leather strap with a small pouch and a sheathed dagger halfway along it. You break open the clasp to find that it contains 20 gold crowns. You can take both the dagger and the crowns if you're able to do so. Well, we'll take the crowns. Do we want the dagger? There's no benefit to having a dagger. Don't need anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think we need to take the dagger. Anyone want to take the dagger? Let's move on. 157. I just healed one. Just healed one. The forest begins to thin out until finally you can make out a road through the trees ahead. The highway is full of people heading south. Many are wheeling their possessions along on handcarts. If you wish to join the refugees and perhaps learn more of what has happened in the north, turn to 30. If you would prefer to continue to move south but under the cover of the trees, turn to 167. Do we join the convoy? Or do we move south under the cover of the trees? I think with the uh, glitch on the stream, we're quite far behind now in terms of whether it's live or not. Heal again. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Putting us on 11. All, every single one counts. That healing is quite useful, but you've got to remember it. You've got to remember it. Um, yeah, so the dagger, there's no, there is no mechanical difference between an axe, a spear, or a dagger. Um, there may be an entry which says if you have a dagger, you can hide it or something, but I, I, who knows? Who knows? So, 167, we continue under the cover of the trees, or 30, we join the convoy. 167 is definitely winning. 
167 it is. We'll take 167 because we are near the end of today's stream. Uh, I have another stream in half, well, in an hour's time from this uh, for Project Deos. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. You have been traveling for about a mile when you notice two legs sticking out from behind a large boulder. We possess the Kai discipline of sixth sense, so we look at the two legs and we gather our abilities around us. Do we feel danger? Your skill enables you to recognize the boots and leggings of a king soldier. You can sense that the man is wounded and in need of help. And that's where we're going to end today's episode. We have survived, but, but for the grace of the healing um, discipline, I think, and that incredibly lucky roll, that incredibly lucky roll. Uh, so that puts us on 178. 178. Great stuff, folks. We've been here before. 178. Let's see. Can we succeed or not? Now, we have reached the end of the stream. We have reached the end of the stream. And so it's time to give away this book. Now, it's very, 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 very important... So listen carefully, for I shall say this only as many times as I need to. This book will be shipped out to you if you are in the US, the UK, or Europe, primarily those areas, and I'm going to sign it for you. Not Joe Dever or his son, but me, because you're part of these streams, and I want to thank you for that. If you're outside of those territories, uh, you won't get the signed copy, but you will get a copy nonetheless. So how do we give away this book? How do we decide who is the rightful person who belongs, uh, who owns this book? Well, there is no right or wrong way to do it. So the only way I can do it is to randomly roll through the chat to see who gave me a number option, who was active in our choice of um, things, uh, decisions, and then you need to send me an email. And if you don't send me an email... You won't get the book, and you can't cry about it um, later. So you have to send me an email to, great game ma uh, to guy at greatgamemaster.com, and then we will chat, and I'll get all of your details and that sort of thing. So to win a copy, to win the copy of Flight from the Dark, as signed by me, you can also say, hey, don't sign the book. You ruin, the, ruin it. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, yes, Canada does count as part of the US because I can drop it in the post, and it goes up to Canada and everything is fine and hunky-dory. And you don't have to pay, um, well, you might have to pay customs. I don't know. That's how these things work. I, I don't make the rules. Well, I kind of do. Well, I don't make those rules. You know what I mean. Um, and uh, so so there we are. All right. Let's see. And da -da 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 -da. I am just randomly, I'm scrolling up and down. Not looking, not looking, not looking. And I'm going to stop here and I scan and I... Open my eyes, and the first name that I see there is Regina Rayner. Uh, Regina Rayner, uh, who said hoot, and then uh, combat rating, and then yes, with a bow, and uh, so Regina Rayner. Regina Rayner, you are today's winner of Flight from the Dark. I hope, I hope, I hope that I can send you this copy. If you are still watching, I hope you're watching as well. If you're not watching... I'm very sorry for that. Um, but there you go. So, Regina Rayner, hopefully you're watching this. Uh, I will give you uh, until... Well, I'll give you until next stream. If you haven't written to me by next stream, I will send the book off to somebody else. So, there you are. Folks, massive thank you for watching this stream. As it is the end of the month, I will be uh, hosting the behind the scenes of Project Deos, which is the Dungeon Fog map making software update. If you are part of that Kickstarter, if you're following along that Kickstarter, um, come and join me. That's on the Dungeon Fog YouTube, uh, the Dungeon Fog Twitch channel, I should say. That's twitch.tv forward slash Dungeon Fog. And that begins in 56 minutes. So uh, there you go. Regina, I'm glad that you're still in chat. Please, would you send me an email and uh, we can send you your book. So there we are. Until next week, when we continue the adventures of Lone Wolf, 
I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.